VM within the Android platform. Now, after that, we have to package it up in a special way um, using zip and a, and a tool called AAPT, which actually includes some of the, it will actually pre-compile some of the information that we have, including the Android manifest file and a variety of other things, and actually create an Android package. So you might remember that um, I said before that this has gotten a bit easier. Well, it's always been a little bit easier than this. If you are kind of the, hard, the, the hardcore hacker person that loves to do everything manually, you can certainly do this. But for the rest of us, you can just download the SDK, which includes Eclipse, um, the IDE, and also the Android Tools plugin, the ADT plugin, and allows you basically just to go straight from the code directly to the end result, the Android package. You can find all of this on developer.android.com. Um, and one of the ways that it is much easier now is that they actually package all of this up into one download. That makes it much easier. Before, it was really a pain. You had to download Eclipse, and then you had to download the SDK, and then you had to download the e Eclipse plugin, and you had to get it all to work together. But luckily, we don't have to do that anymore. It comes in just one nice package. It makes it very easy for us to do development. So again, um, if you're actually interested in this, go to the website, developer.android.com slash SDK slash index. Um, download the SDK, and that's it. You pretty much can get started with it right away. So from here, how do we actually create an application? Well, of course, the Hello World app is the, well, the simplest thing that we can do to actually create an application. And there's a couple of things that I want to point out about the code in this Hello World app. And I'm, and I'm going to switch here to um, this other screen because it has better text color and it makes it a little bit easier to take a look at what's going on. So at the very top of this Java file, we basically have a couple of things. One is, is uh, package information. How many of you have developed for Java in the past or at all? Pretty much everybody. Okay, so for those of you that haven't, um, it's very similar in syntax to C or C++. Of course, there's, there's a variety of differences. It's meant to be very heavily object-oriented. Um, and I'll try to point out as many differences as I can, as I can, but I don't really want to do a Java primer right now. Um, there's, if you, if you do a search for Java tutorials, you will find some very excellent tutorials by Oracle um, that, that talk a little bit more about this. But we have to put all of this code into the scope of a package, into, the, into a particular namespace, and so that's what we're doing in this first line. Then we're going to import a variety of libraries that actually make it possible for us to run this code. Um, the activity library, which we just talked about, and a couple of other things which are actually required for us to run this. The bundle um, is required by the OS. Um, this log one isn't really required unless we're doing some logging, which are, there's some very basic logging at the very bottom of this, of this code, which we'll look at in just a second. And also a widget. Um, you can maybe guess by the name what this actually does, but it's essentially this. It allows you to place a text object on the activity and allow you to view some, some text on, that, um, on the screen. So that's just all sort of some, um, some initial setup that we have to do. And this is the contents of the code. Now, one thing that you'll notice, for those of you that are Java developers, that's very different from other things, is that there's no main method. There is no method that makes it very obvious where we're actually starting the application. And the reason for that is that the main method is, is done by the operating system itself. What the OS does is it looks at the manifest file that we've actually created. And so this is a full-fledged Android manifest file that has been not redacted for simplicity so that we can actually see how some of these things work. Again, notice that this is the manifest XML element. It uses a minimum SDK version of 3, which is now ancient. There's no need for you to use version 3. That's like Android 1.5 or something. So only if you want maximum compatibility do you really need to do that. But even then, there's problems using minimum SDK version of 3. It implies certain permissions that are um, not necessarily what you would want. Um, I think it 
wants full access to contacts and some other stuff that if you just upgrade the minimum SDK version to 4 or 5, then you lose a lot of these problems that, that actually existed. But this is meant for maximum compatibility here. Now the application within it, we actually define where the icon is for that app on the home screen of the device. It's within, you'll notice, at drawable. Remember I mentioned that drawable directory within our resources. We can have various resolutions of our icons to support the different density and different sized screens that might exist. Um, similarly, can we actually apply a label to the name of that application within the string resource? And provide, you'll notice that here we're looking for a specific resource within the string directory called an app name, um, which um, you'll just have to um, you'll just have to trust me for now that it says something in English. Um, now if we skip this and go down to activity, notice that we have defined one activity here. And within it we have this, this idea of an intent filter. And what this intent filter actually does is it notifies the OS what this activity should actually do. And there's a variety of, of filters that we can apply to it. Perhaps we want to restrict this activity from being open in other applications. Remember that I mentioned that within task, we can have other applications request an activity. We can explicitly disallow or allow that with these intent filters. But also, we apply these two elements to this intent filter, telling the, um, the OS that this is the main activity and this is the one that I want launched on boot. When, or on boot is opening the application itself. And so really, there's no main method, but that's because we've told the Android OS that we have this activity, and this is the one that we want to run. Now, the activity itself, <coughs> excuse me, the activity itself goes through a life cycle of, of, of sorts. There's a variety of methods that allow you to run some code when the activity has first been, first been called upon to actually open, and then things have been rendered on the screen, and then it's finally ready for use by the user. We're going to ignore a lot of those for now, and I'll defer to the, um, the Android documentation for you to get more information on that. But now we can take a look again at our Hello World code and realize how this is actually working. We have a public class, code one. This is just the, the class for this one activity. Extends activity because this is, in fact, an object of type activity. I actually want to create some code that launches an activity and displays something to the user. And within that, we have this one method, onCreate. This method is invoked by the OS within this activity object whenever this activity is about to be started. It's saying, OK, I am about to display this activity, so I'm going to create it and display it on the screen. What do you want me to do? It's asking this code. And by asking, I mean it's invoking this method, which allows our code to actually create the layout and apply a layout onto this activity and then display it to the user. So the next few lines, um, this super.onCreate, we just have to make sure that we actually invoke the, ac the main activity class's onCreate method just to do any house cleaning. Otherwise, you will get a very nasty error from, uh, um, from the Android plugin or from the SDK when you do this. And then programmatically, are we actually going to create a text view that says some text. We're going to create a text view object, uh, just basically instantiated in this first highlighted line. Next, we're going to set the text to be displayed by this text view. And then we are going to set the content view, which is the content displayed within this activity. So this is not necessarily a mysterious function call. This is actually a function call that's implemented by the Android activity class that allows us to set the layout for this activity. So basically, the layout for this activity will be what? Any guesses based on this code? Yeah. That's right. So all the only thing that will be on the screen when we actually run this activity will just be a text view. But that text view itself is, is invisible. We don't actually see its bounds. We just see the text that's contained within it. So we should expect to see the text, oh, hi. Now, there's some logging capability stuff down here, which if we had a little bit more time, I would explain is very useful for us to actually get 
messages from our code back into this really cool little section down here, logcats, which allows you to actually run. It's sort of a console-like way of actually being able to look at, um, um, at errors from your activity. In fact, you can see it says this is an error which masks or which uh, replicates what we see here. This is very good for debugging in the Android world. But if I actually run this code, this is what we would see. So very much like in Xcode, how you have an emulator for iOS, do you have an emulator for um, Android devices as well? So what's cool about this is that this is actually um, an emulated Android device. And so I can go to the, oh, I can't see the, uh, we've been bitten by the resolution bug. There's some buttons down here that allow me to go to the home screen and we can sort of play around with this version of, of the Android device. Unfortunately, it's cut off. So Rest assured, it's there. You can click on it, um, but not right now. But what this allows us to see is our Hello World application. We have here our activity, which takes up the entirety of the screen. By default, the theme was black. We didn't get to see that, but it's elsewhere, actually, in 